relationship with the Lord. And if I don't turn this on, I'll have a bad relationship with my wife. So. <laughs> <laughs> don't believe that. Don't Is it okay if I joke every once in a yes. while? Yes. 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 side by side with him on a daily basis. And the pattern of the garden shows this pretty clearly. Adam and Eve walked with God and they walked together and day after day they walked and talked and, and that was God's desired relationship. And then sin separated the holiness of God. God in his absolute demonstration of power um, God shields us from the total of his glory so that we don't die so if you were instantly to stand before God without a resurrected body 
your body would fail. Yeah. Uh, and, and sometimes, under the glory of God, I think all of us that preach and, and spend a lot of time in prayer have, had, have times where our body becomes weak because we've been in the presence of God in a strong dimension. And why do we do that? Because we like it. Yeah. yeah. And, and that is really what God meant for us to be. He meant for us to experience Him. Not just hear other people's stories, but to personally experience Him. That we would, in other words, God is not afraid of us, and He's not mad at us, because He gave His Son Jesus that we might, through that death of Christ and the atonement of Christ, be able to access Him in righteousness. Yes. Amen. So what we do is we put on the righteousness that is rightfully ours as Christians because of the blood of Jesus. You see, the death of Christ, when we receive Christ, we transfer all of our sins over on that cross and that cross when Jesus died our sins died and that's why Jesus said God why have you forsaken me all of a sudden there was a break that Jesus sensed in the relationship because the sins in the entire world were placed upon him And so God, because of the death of His Son, looks at us through the death of Christ. And it says in Corinthians that we become the righteousness of Christ by faith. What does that mean? That means by belief in what Jesus did for us. So we, and yeah, I know this is basic, but as Christians, we get into the performance modality where, oh, God really loves me today because I did a lot for him. Well, that's not why God loves you. God loves you first, but there's a difference, a difference between God loving the entire world and those who have a relationship with Him. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He loved every human. And He loved you so much that He gave His Son to die that we might be accepted by God because through Satan sin entered the world but through Jesus much more abundantly it says in Romans does salvation <laughs> come upon us and for that reason we develop relationship with him because of his righteousness which is placed upon us his righteousness being put on us and it's imputed and that's a, another one of those words you don't hear every day but it's like putting on a perfectly clean white robe the robe of righteousness and you put that on and you walk according to the robe you don't walk according to your works you're walking according to the robe. Amen. But if you have the robe on, you don't want to go roll in the mud. That's right. <laughs> and a lot of people think, well, I need to get good enough 
so that God will accept me. No, all you need to do is accept him, and he will start working on your life. And God will lead you in relationship to him. And a lot of the things that you willingly did before, you're not going to willingly do. Why? Because you have a new heart. Because you're wearing the robe. Because you have a friendship with God. And, and you know, you guys, there are things that, that, um, that you say to your wife because you want a relationship with her. Come on. In fact, let me put it another way. There's things you better say to her. <laughs> if you want a relationship with her. Come on. Amen, come on. And ladies, there's something you need to say to your husband. Amen. Come on. This is, this is why we change our behavior for relationship. And that's what we do with God. We change our behavior to have relationship. Amen. Amen. And that's, that's where we are. We want the relationship with God. And I know Noah walked with God, and we don't have record of that. But I cannot imagine being able to build an ark of that magnitude unless somebody told you how to do it. Because I will tell you for a fact, uh, knowing a little bit about wooden boats and shipping, that uh, if you don't really build that thing well, that sucker's going to fall apart in the waves. They're going to beat it to death, and it'll be nothing but a bunch of floating timbers. And that's not what happened. Here is the desire of God that at the end of our life that we would go and be with Him forever. So right now we're in a temporary vein. And as our loved ones go on, and go to be with Jesus. You know, as our loved ones go to be with Jesus, they get on the train first. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to jump on the one behind them. Yeah. But eventually, we're all going to the same place. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. If you're a born-again child of God, you've, got, you've accepted Christ as your Savior, then that train is going to heaven and that's the only place it's going to drop you off. Because when you're a child of God and have accepted Jesus, there's no other place for you to go. When you fall asleep from this present life and wake up in your new life, you're going to all of a sudden find yourself in the presence of Jesus and his angels. This is going to pass away. And Amen. the glorious is there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I've heard people who have died on operating tables that came back and say, you know, Jesus or the angel told me I had to come back, but I never felt more alive than when I was there. And I had no pain. I felt perfect love. I felt perfect joy. I felt perfect peace in that presence of God. Amen. And so when we, when we look at what God's desire is, it makes sense for us to have a walk with God. And the closer your friendship is, the more you talk to the person that you're friends with. Mm -hmm. That's right. The more you want to be with them, the more that you want to walk with them, the more that the more that you're drawn into this relationship. Come on. Amen. And then when you get into an argument with somebody, what do you do on the phone? You quit talking to them. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, you get the button on the side and they call on you. <laughs> you hit that thing that says, can I call you later, and you never call. <laughs> And when we engage God and spend time with Him, now God speaks to us in a number of different ways and sometimes through, through ministers and, and people that share the gospel, but a lot of times God speaks directly to our hearts with impressions, with ideas and things that he puts within us. And he says, I love you. And when we obey those things, God, God opens the door of blessing in our lives as we listen to that voice of the Holy Spirit. And the voice is enhanced when we read God's word. When, and you say, but I, I don't know it. Uh, a particular place. No, just reading God's word allows God to speak to you and opens up his relationship with you even if you don't read the words that prophesy today to your life, to your situation right now. Reading God's word opens up your spirit to receive from the Lord. It's talked about, the Word of God is talked about as being a washing of water. It's a cleansing. When you're all wound up and when you're feeling bad, when things aren't going well, just sitting down and just reading God's Word, just, just reading God's Word brings a whole different dimension into your life than what you were feeling before. And we are so blessed today. I mean, I've got... Hallelujah. <laughs> I got Bibles and Bibles and more Bibles and more Bibles yet. And, and also commentaries and all kinds of other things. And, um, but, but just being in the presence of the Lord, when I was, you've heard me talk about working as a laborer, and, and I used to have, I had this wonderful little New Testament. It, it just fit in a man's rear pocket. <laughs> and it didn't feel like a lump. It felt like it fit. It had leather binding. It was, I called it my dagger. <laughs> but I, I, would, I would be doing something during the day. When you're doing things like shoveling or raking or cleaning up or mowing lawns or trimming hedges, it's not too intellectually stimulating. <laughs> it's work. So it goes a lot better when you just drag out your dagger and read a couple of scriptures and just think about it for a while Amen. while you're working because there is food for your soul as you have this relationship with God, as you, as you come into the knowledge of who He is and, and what He is and as you experience Him on a personal level. And Abraham used to walk with God and talk with him as Adam used to walk and talk with God. And other men of, in, had the Lord come to them sometimes in a still small voice for Elijah. Uh, sometimes angels communicated with men. Uh, but sometimes it wasn't an angel. Sometimes I believe it was... Uh, uh, pre-manifestation of Christ that came to them and talked to them in the garden in the place of difficulty um, and that's quite a long theological study and we don't have time for it this morning but I like to talk about it <laughs> the places in the Old Testament that men tried to bow down before an angel the angel said don't do it I'm just your fellow servant but there are other times in the Bible where men bowed down and they stayed there legitimately 
because they were no longer talking with an angel. Joshua in the case with captain of the Lord's host. <laughs> and, and so we see this differential there between a relationship with an angel and a relationship with the living God. God so loved us that he sent us his Holy Spirit. When Jesus was walking the earth, and, and Jesus was in this place, everybody could experience him there. When he was over here at this play, other place, everybody could experience him there. But the Holy Spirit came, and because he wasn't in just one location, everybody can experience him equally. Amen. And God wants to open that door in our lives so that we have a fellowship with his presence, with the Holy Spirit. And God's anointing is there just for receiving and worshiping. Amen. So, how do we, when we come to church, there are people that come and just sing the songs. But there are other people that sing the words of the songs in worship. And they may raise their hands and they may move a little bit. But what are they doing? They're opening the door of worship because they want to have a relationship with God. Amen. Because the presence of the Lord is every place where two or three are gathered together or more. And so when you have a church full of people that want to just get it over with, there's not much worship. You can sing short songs. Sing the first and last verse. Take the offering. But there are other people that start praying before they get to church. And they, they're reading the word or they're listening to somebody on the radio or TV. And they're just praying and saying, God, what do you have for me today? Amen. It's not about what God's got for the other guy. It's about what God's got for you. And that's why at the end of church, we have people gathering at the altars. Because we're praying into what God's trying to tell us. We want to know what he's saying to us. It's okay if God blesses the other guy, but we want something personal Amen. from him. So we go home and we, we think about what the Lord is saying to us. We may even make a couple notes. We may go look up a scripture or two. Why? Because we want to keep this relationship going in the background. A relationship with prayer. And there are times that I put on worship music and, um, and you know, this phone that I've got, I can look up stuff to listen to, but there's times that I turn it off and I just want to pray in the Spirit and just worship the Lord. I don't need any external influence. I'm just praying and pouring out. What do you do to your very best friend when you've got a problem? and you can trust him. What happens? You pour out your heart. Amen. Yes, amen. But you don't pour out your heart to a stranger. Because a stranger doesn't care. And our whole world needs somebody to relate to that cares about us. 
and thousands and millions of people go to a bar. And have a conversation with a bartender they don't know. And so because it's not a real relationship, they medicate themselves with a bunch of very expensive liquid. And then the next morning they wake up and say, why in the world did I do that last night? But with God, no matter what your difficulty, First Peter 5 says, casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. Amen. God can take the dump. And it won't run him away. You can scream, you can cry, you can get mad, you can get sad, you can just express yourself out. But he is a friend that sticks closer than the brother. Amen. Amen. Apostle Paul did many things, and and, uh, and God used him mightily in miracles, and God used him to preach to many people and he went through a lot of things. And, um, but there's a, a scripture here that, is, um, that has captured my mind in Philippians 3, verse 10. And it will continue to capture me for the rest of my life. And it doesn't hurt to read a verse or two ahead. And verse 8 says this. Well, verse 7 is good too. <laughs> but what things were gained to me, these I've counted loss for Christ. Yet, indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may win Christ. And, and as to the best of our knowledge, Paul, or Saul, came from a wealthy family and was disowned. Because he received Christ. And then it says, And be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith, from God by faith. And then verse 10. That I may know him. That I may know him. What was Paul saying? My possessions don't matter. And I've been through many things with many people, but he's, he says there's one thing that matters to me. That I may know him. Amen. I want to submit to you, there's a life where we wake up in the morning and we say, God, what are you saying to me today? And and you focus on the Lord and, and when you can't stand the news, you turn it quickly off so that you can get refocused on the Lord. Amen. And, and you say, now, Lord, what, what's going on? And, and you may turn on some praise music, but you're, you're holding on to your communication with the Lord. We used to have a little parakeet that uh, that we actually got a hold of it. It was a little yellow parakeet. We got a hold of it before it was really able to fly or do anything. And we would put it on our shoulder. 
and walk around with it. And we would be comfortable with that parakeet on our shoulder. And one day my grandfather had it on his shoulder and walked outside and that was the end of our relationship with the parakeet. <laughs> oh. But while you're walking with a parakeet on your shoulder, you try to be careful how you walk. And sometimes the parakeet's there and you don't know it. And the Holy Spirit is like a dove on your shoulder. And sometimes he's there and you don't know it. But he's there. And the more that you walk with the dove in mind, the longer the dove stays close. But if you decide to do your jumping jacks, the dove may not stay there. And so it is with us. See, why do we pray before service? We pray before service because we are continuing this relationship with God that we want to continue. Why do we pray after service? Because sometimes during the message is something that we, that we want to talk and get a little more of from the Holy Spirit. And so before we go out and discover that our car won't start, <laughs> and we forget it all, we want to get it fixed in our mind, in our heart. Because as much as you want him, he wants you more. I said, as much as you want him, he wants you more. It's Paul saw many miracles, but that wasn't what he exalted on. He went through many trials, but that's not what he exalted on. The goal of the Apostle Paul that is I I may know him. I want to hear from him. I want to feel his heart. I want to walk in his pathways. Hallelujah. So if you're here this morning, I want to tell you something. There's more. Amen. It's not about the number of miracles you do. It's not about the number of whatever you've done. It's about your walk with Him. That's the thing. Yeah, it's wonderful when God works through us. I love to see people healed. I love to see all these things happen. And they happen in His presence. That's another sermon. But most of all, it's about our relationship with Him. That we hear His voice. It's time for me to close, but I want to share one more story. I had a series on tape. I've still got it, but my reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder isn't working right now. <laughs> By a man named Cy Homer. He was in Israel. And he says, would you do something for me? Those were the days of the cassette tape recorder. And he said, I was in Israel and I found a shepherd with his sheep and, and I said, gave him some money and he turned on his tape recorder and said, 
would you do something? Would you call your sheep for me? See, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And another's voice they will not follow, but my sheep hear my voice. And the shepherd would call for this sheep, and call for another sheep, and call for another sheep. And when he called, the sheep would come to the shepherd because the shepherd called him. And he recorded that on his cassette so that he could just listen to it later and just think about the call of God. God calling his sheep one at a time. Amen. Listening to their master's voice. <laughs> I believe God's calling you today. And as we close the service this morning, if you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like to introduce you to Jesus. To a walk of fellowship with him that is far different than any other walk. And I'm not sure whether there's anybody here today that doesn't know Jesus as their Savior. But religion is okay, but it's not relationship. And what God wants to give you is very simply a relationship with him that will continue for the rest of your life. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness to us. Lord, this morning we just come before you. We ask if there's anybody here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that, Lord, they would receive you. Is there anybody here that you would raise your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. I haven't accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Probably going to have to wave it because I can't see it real well. But uh, How many would you raise your hands and say, Brother Stoll, I'm hungry for more of a relationship with him. <laughs> Amen. Let's stand together. We'll be closed and then we'll invite you to the altar and, and just close this service. And I want to just invite you to come down and spend some time with Jesus if you can this morning. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness. We ask you, Lord, that you would help us to increase our relationship with you. That we would pray more and read your word more. But also, Lord, that we would walk every day, every minute, every hour with the idea that you're on our shoulder, that you're with us, and you care about us. And even though sometimes, because of situations, we don't feel your presence, God, we thank you for being there anyway. And we pray that, Lord, as we read your word, and pray the Lord your perfect peace that passes all understanding would fill the hearts of your people this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Altars are open. And